Good morning everyone. Um, my name is Linda and I am one of the leaders here at Hope Church and I am going to be carrying on with the series that we have been looking at as a church over the last few weeks about who God is. Now I have found it so helpful to get my gaze fixed back on this God that I believe in, this God that I follow, because the things that I uh, knew as normal, the things that were things that were quite secure in my life, had suddenly over this last season felt like they were on shifting sand. And for me, um, this series has helped me uh, get my eyes back on and reminding me of who this God is that I have cho chosen to follow. And I hope it's been just as helpful for you that in the midst of other things shifting, you have been able to, with me and us as a church, get your gaze fixed on who this God is that the Bible speaks about. And this morning, um, I am going to look at uh, the imagery that is used in the Bible that describes God as the rock. And so before I start, I'd like to pray for us because, um, it, it, you know, the words I say are, are good, but we want the Holy Spirit to speak through the word of God, through his Bible to us so that what we hear becomes truth in the way that we live our lives. So, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We just ask that as I share this morning, you will bring revelation to us. You will do something deep in each of us that again just strengthens and deepens our intimacy and our knowledge of who you are. God, that whilst things in our world may shift and change, you are a God who is unchanging in who you are. And that is what gives us hope. And that is what secures our peace. And that is what we put our trust in. So Holy Spirit, as I share this morning, would you come and meet each one of us from the youngest to the oldest, exactly where we are. We need more of you. We need a deeper revelation of you. Come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, for your name, for your glory, amen. And so, as I said um, this morning, I am going to unpack a little bit the imagery that's used in the Bible that describes God as the rock. Now, uh, every time I say that, I feel a smile coming on because if you are a, a film buff like I am, then when you hear the, the rock, into your mind pops a picture of Dwayne Johnson. Now, Beth, my housemate, and I are both fans of Dwayne Johnson. So whenever I say it, I, I have to shift my thinking. But you might be like my nephew, and it might be that you collect rocks and he collects different minerals and, and stones and rocks. And that might be the image that you have in your mind. But the image that the, the Bible um, is, is kind of a showing or picturing when it talks about God, the rock. Um, and it's throughout the Bible, but particularly used in the Psalms, songs and poems written by David and others expressing um, who they see God as and the characteristics of God through metaphors and poetic language. And, uh, and I've got um, two images there of, a, of rocks that I have visited or, or mountain ranges that I have visit, visited that I uh, feel kind of characterizes the rock of God uh, more. And one is a picture of the three sisters in the Blue Mountains mountain range in New South Wales, Australia. And the other is Masada, a rock fortress that is um, in Israel. Both very different, but both uh, that kind of imagery of a rock that I want to share with you um, this morning. So what is the significance of God being our rock? Well, um, as I said, there are references throughout the Bible um, of God as the rock. 
and I wanted to pull out um, a, 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 just one of the um, references in the Psalms. And so if you have your Bible, please turn to Psalm 18. Um, I'm only going to look at verses 1 and 2. It's a long psalm, but let me encourage you to go away and read the psalms. Read Psalm 18. Um, they are songs and poems written by David and other authors just pouring out their, their um, distress and then joy of, to God. They are not afraid to be real with their frustration. They are not afraid to be real with their battles to God. And, um, and it helps as, I, as you and I read those Psalms to get a picture of who this God is um, that we serve. So Psalm 18 verses 1 and 2. It starts off by giving us a little bit of an introduction. Um, it says, for the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord. He sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and the hand of Saul. He said, I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. There is a lot to unpack in there, but I'm going to look at two um, particular points about what is the significance of God being our rock. Well, in there it describes God as our place of refuge and shelter. And why is that significant? Because um, just like David, just like other men and women in the Bible, we will experience different seasons throughout our lives. Some will be great, but others will feel overwhelming and they will feel like things are shifting in ways that we hadn't expected. They may bring us to depths of despair. They may feel like they, they will just, just overpower us at times. And I think it's good, just like David, to be real with God. If you keep reading that psalm, it talks about the battles that he faced, the difficulties that he went through. He didn't shy away from telling God exactly how he felt. But in the midst of that difficulty, in the midst of overwhelming situations far out of his control, he is able to draw into God as a place of refuge and a place of shelter. That goes for you too. You, whatever you may be facing now, in a year's time, in five years time, however your circumstances may change, this God is not just the rock. David calls him my rock. He is your rock. He is my rock. He is the rock. There is a sense of shelter from the storms in our God. I know that's a lot of pictorial language, a lot to process. What does that mean? That doesn't help when you are feeling overwhelmed with a situation. Well, actually it does. It does help. That imagery helps. The storm doesn't stop. But you can know security and shelter, safety and a place of refuge when you belong to the living God. When you choose to trust this God that we have been sharing about over the last few weeks, this God who is not changing, he is immovable in who he is. His character, who he is, does not change as the storms hit us. And even just that gives us a sense of security, a feeling of safety. Our God does not change with the seasons. So what does it mean to take refuge in him? 
What does it mean that he is our shelter, my rock, my shelter? It means that like David, we can be real with him, with the struggles and the difficulties. And then we can remind ourselves of who he is and put those things, lay them at his feet. Lay them down at the throne of God. And then, whether those overwhelming circumstances and situations change or not, we can trust that our God, the rock, is a safe place for us. That we can put our trust in him and that we can weather the storm because he protects us. He is our refuge. Circumstances may have an impact on us, but ultimately our hope, our trust isn't in the circumstances. It's in a God who is who he is, a God who was and is and is to come. If you feel overwhelmed by what's happening at the moment, then know that God is your safe refuge. You can go into him. You can lean on him. Read his word, the Bible. Find out about this God we've been talking about. Because this God, when you put your trust in him, he does not let you down. Does that mean suddenly the storms change? No. Does that mean those of us who have felt lost in the last few weeks will suddenly not feel the sadness of that? No. But it means despite the storm, despite the loss, despite the changing circumstances, despite the events that cause us much pain, we can know a sense of peace. We can know a sense of hope because our hope goes beyond today and tomorrow. It goes beyond these circumstances that we live through. And our hope is in a God who lives, a God who is faithful, a God who is who he says he is. The rock, my rock, your rock, our rock. Okay, another significant thing that I think we can pull out from the metaphor God the rock is um, that God is our strength and our security. And um, as a nation, we have faced uh, COVID. Actually, as a world, we've faced COVID over the last uh, couple of months. But there are other things as well that have been um, disruptive to the sense of security for many. Um, I know that the, the uh, murder of several uh, black men and women in America has really impacted me um, it, over the last few weeks. I've watched it, I've felt the injustice of it, and what it's done is bring up in me experiences that I've had of racism. And it's, it's been a battle for me to process um, and, and keep trusting God in this, but also to speak into it with, with grace truth and and not be afraid to speak into what I'm seeing and saying it is wrong. The church does not support racism. But I have to say, it's not my sense of security. Because it has just brought up the undervaluing of a life the life of a black man and um and that is soul destroying it's soul destroying for our 
uh, community, uh, the community that of, of black members, but it's soul destroying for all of us who are people of color. And I and I I know it has had been like a cloud hanging over me in my processing, in my prayers, in the unearthing of old thought patterns. And when I have felt my weakest about it and my most distraught about it, I have been able to turn to the rock who I know not only um, delights in the different colours of skin and the different uh, uh, languages that he has created, but he doesn't just delight in it, he rejoices. He says, yes, I could have created you all like this one way, but instead I have made a myriad of colors and races and languages because that delights me. I rejoice in it. It gives me much joy that one day, one day, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Languages are a good thing. Races and different skin colors and different cultures are good things. God delights in it. And when I feel weak because I am, I am in pain from how one or how one group can treat another, I throw myself on this rock who is my strength. My security and our security as a community doesn't come from what people say about us. It doesn't come from the accolades we might get. It doesn't come from our position or our job. It comes because we know we are children of the living God. This rock gives us a sense of security that is beyond ourselves because he says not only do I delight in you the way you are but I created you to be that way the rock our God is our strength he is our security for some of us, it's not these issues of uh, racism that might be churning. It might be COVID. It might be fear of things changing again. You feel safe in your homes. You feel safe in your bubble. And God gives us wisdom, absolutely. But he also breaks all fear. We don't live in fear. He has created us to be in community. He is sovereign over all things. And yes, he gives us wisdom, but he also gives us faith and he gives us brothers and sisters and family to walk this journey through with together. And it might be in this time, as things are changing again, you need to remind yourself that your future, your hope, your destiny is not in the hands of something like COVID. Your future, the future of your children and your children's children is in the hands of a loving God. It's in the hands of God the rock. Fear has no place. Fear has no place. And yes, we want to be wise, but we also want to be a people whose trust is in our God during this season. And, and if you know you're struggling with fear and anxiety, can I encourage you to uh, speak to someone who's a friend and ask them to pray for you? If you know that you are struggling with uh, what you are seeing on the news or, or racism or any of those things are bringing, get someone to pray to you. Let's remind ourselves of God the rock, God who is our strength, God who is our security. Again, 
God allows us to live with the consequences of our decisions and our choices, and he is our security, but he doesn't just stop things from happening. But in the midst of the happening, in the midst of that pain, we can draw on this God, this creative, generous, relational God who will meet us where we are. You are on a journey with God and he will meet you where you are and be your strength and your security from the place that you are. That is our God. That is our God. Our rock. The rock. So we've looked at the significance of God being our rock. And I just want to finish by, um, by talking about Jesus, the rock. Um, when I say God, you can, we can always think Father God and, uh, and who he is, but Jesus is God and Jesus is referred to as the rock um, prophetically from the Old Testament, but in the New Testament as well. So I'm going to read from, um, from 1 Peter 2, 4 to 8. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. And I just wanted to finish by uh, looking at Jesus the rock. He is a rock, a stone that is the cornerstone that the church is built on. Jesus came and lived and broke the law, the curse of the law, so that you and I, by believing in him, his death and resurrection, that he is alive today, that we can have a relationship with God because of Jesus taking our sin and our punishment on himself. Jesus, the rock, the stone, the cornerstone of the church. Jesus, the stumbling block for many. It says it here, if you put your trust in him, then you can know relationship with God. You can know eternal life. You can know the peace that comes from knowing our destiny, our hope isn't in this life. It's in the one to come. But many reject the, this stone, Jesus Many reject him. They disobey his message. If you can put your hope and your trust in Jesus and what was achieved on the cross, his death, his life, then when the things of this world are like shifting sand, if you lose someone dear to you, painful though it is. You can know that you are standing on a rock, a hope that goes beyond this life. If you lose your job, if you are uncertain about the future of your child's schooling, 
Yes, they are things that are concerns. And yes, we want to work to make those things better, different, make a difference in them. But in the midst of it, we do not need to fear. We do not need to be um, uh, anxious because our hope ultimately is not in the things of this life. We trust this God, this Jesus to guide us, to lead us, to walk us through difficult situations. Your hope is not in a situation. If you can put your trust in this Jesus, Jesus who is God, then when the worst happens, you will still be standing on the rock. You will be still standing because your hope is in something greater than what is happening around you. Our hope is built on the greatest gift, Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you, whatever the season, whatever you may be living through at the moment, Trust God, trust Jesus, turn to him. He is our refuge and our strength. He is a, a, our safe place. Trusting him does not mean you won't be disappointed by life or circumstances. It doesn't mean that you won't live through disappointment or seasons of great pain, but it does mean that you can stand firm through those seasons, that the ground that you have built on, your foundations are built on the rock, our rock, God. And so I just wanted to leave um, you with a, a couple of applications, a couple of things to, to uh, work on and and do this week well one is to be real with god about how you are feeling we we live in a culture which uh, where everyone wants to present a very strong um, face and front to others but we need places where we can just throw ourselves on the mercy and compassion of god and friends and family together we uh, we can we can support and love and pray for each other through difficult times. But one, be real with God. If you are worried about what the future in this next season, what this next step looks like, pour it out like David did in the Psalms. God is big enough to take it. He's strong enough to carry us in our weakness. Second thing, I just want to encourage you to do. Um, in this season is to uh, something which the Bible talks about, which is renewing your mind, changing the way you think. Sometimes our thoughts can be overwhelming, particularly when the season feels like it's uh, shifting around us. Things feel like they are shifting around us. Well, the reason we've been looking at who God is, is so that we can get our minds aligned with the truth. God is good. Despite my circumstances, God is good. God is a safe place. Okay, I don't feel safe out and about, but God is safe. And with him, I can walk through this season. So I want to encourage you, be real with God. Renew your mind. There is a battle going on with our minds and our thought patterns when we read the word of God, it's not just so that we can say we're reading it. It's so that it changes the way we think. It changes the way we behave and act. Our hearts are changed by the word of God. Take time in this season, whether you feel overwhelmingly busy or whether you know you've got lots of time, take time to, to write down thoughts that you know are not of God, not healthy, not um, benefiting you. And instead, write down biblical truth that you can meditate on, biblical truth that you can hold on to. 
But remember, we, we look at the whole truth. God does not promise an easy life, but he promises if we trust him, we will have eternity with him. And finally, order your hopes. Order your hopes. What do I mean by that? Our hope, your hope, is not in the things of this world. Your hope is not in getting great jobs, having lots of money. It's not in relationships. Your hope is in Jesus. Your hope is in his death, his resurrection, and eternity with him if we choose to put our faith in him. So I want to encourage you in this season as things are shifting around us to get our hope aligned and put into the right order. God first. God first. He is who our hope is in. And he blesses us with gifts. But he, he is a he's a good God who blesses us with gifts. But he gives and he takes away. Our hope isn't in the giving or the taking. Our hope is in the God that we put our trust in. Our hope is in Jesus.